Hi, I'm John, and this is a product spotlight. I have a box that I've brought over to my friend Seth's house. This is from Class 1 Model Works, and we're going to look at what's in the box. Yeah, and these are the highly anticipated loads for their new uh, heavy uh, depressed center flat cars, and we're really excited about these loads. And uh, uh, come join us while we take a look. So here's what we're looking at today. We have four different flat car loads that were designed specifically, as Seth said, for the depressed center flat cars that Class 1 Model Works came out with fairly recently. The price of these ranges anywhere from $32.99 up to $65.99, and we'll show you which ones cost how much as we look at them. At the time of this recording, these are the only four loads available from Class 1 Model Works, but it's always a good idea to go to their website and see if maybe they've added to the product line or just to see what they have and if they have what you're looking for. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at here, Seth, is the large industrial pump. That's what they call this thing. And this one has a list price of $38.99 and then the manufacturer's allowed price for $34.99. So in case anybody watching doesn't know what that means, if you shop around, you'll probably find it for $34.99 at hobby shops and online retailers. But as you can see, it has a lot of this fine detail. I don't know what these are. I mean- Those are bolt heads, it looks they, like. They look like bolts, right? Yeah. And then the cool thing about this one, and Stephen Priest shows this on the video that he did about adding these loads to the cars, it has these built-in pipes, and I say built-in because this is not actually part of the pump. This is actually part of the tie-down process so that when you put it on the car, he said that these would be welded on to the structure and then welded to the, to the car, right? Yeah, in those areas. So basically what you'd be looking at is something like this. And I'm particularly fond of this one, and I actually intend to make this the one that I detail and turn into something that I'm going to keep in my collection. The reason why is because it's operations friendly. If you want to send this somewhere and have it unloaded, you can just take the pump off of the car when it gets to where it's going or put it on when you're simulating that it's being loaded. And I thought that was a clever thing, actually, that they did by having these pipes built in. So... Yeah, and Stephen suggests, you know, applying a little rust or something like that because they wouldn't really be protecting this stuff. It's really just part of the dunnage. I don't really know that much about these things, so all my intention was for this spotlight is to just show people what they get. I'm just going to call this the front. Again, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the transmission like? on? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just really impressed with how sort of, I, I guess, fine... This is all you can tell. It's molded or printed, right? Mm -hmm. What was that bell? Did I just get an idea? Yeah. Or you get a text I'm, message? Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> sorry. I don't know how to turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, um, it, there's uh, access hatches. There's uh, some very nice uh, tie downs that could also be used for bracing this uh, either on the car or in its final home. It's a uh, Great load with a lot of complexity, and I'm sure an internet search will uh, turn up some prototype installations and some inspiration for weathering and perhaps additional detailing. Well, you can see it has the same type of mm -hmm. very finely rendered, I guess, bolt detail. And there's, I don't, you can't really see it from this angle, but there's stuff underneath too. Yes. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm going to call this the back, Seth. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, I'm being very scientific about this whole thing, but this part looks like it turns, huh? Yes. Perhaps. Yeah, it looks like that's a shaft that's connected to uh, some sort of, you know, drive system in the real world. The rendering is great. There's lots of visual interest, um, you know, little weathering or even since these would be fairly new, maybe just some panel line uh, 
washes, uh, uh -huh. pin washes, sure. um, would bring out a little bit of detail. I wouldn't expect any rust on the painted surfaces, you know, with sure. a device what, fresh out of the factory. What I'm thinking for this is paint it first, some color, some industrial mm -hmm. color, you know, uh, like, you know, Southern Pacific had that pale green that they painted. That ugly green that they painted the inside of their engine with. Well, there's a good Japanese navy green you can find from Tamiya and some of the other military guys that uh, oh. definitely has that feeling. Well, there you go. And then mm. just a light, like a like a very light black wash over it would mm -hmm. would really make all the detail sure. pop. I think so. This is the bottom. I mean, there's not really probably supposed to be a lot of detail on the bottom anyway because it's the idea is it's supposed to be loaded onto a car, so you don't really need anything like that, right? Yeah, and I, I suspect this hole is probably part of the molding process. But again, it might be a handy place to put a little peg in to locate it. You can see where uh, that would uh, line up with one of these center line holes on the car. So you can kind of have the best of both worlds. It stays in place, but it's easy to remove, and it's not uh, obviously uh, visible as something that doesn't belong there. Okay, so this one is called Drum and Bearings. And this one goes for $32.99 list with an MAP of $29.99. It comes with the shaft bearings, and it also comes with these cradles as well as the floral wire. So it has everything here that you would need to load it onto the car. And we'll take a look around the drum. I don't think there's really that much to see. It's just a big round thing with holes in it, right? For lack of a better term, and bracing, right? And again, the fidelity of the print or casting or what, you know, however they made this is really good because all those holes are really small and they look like what I'd expect to see. Oh, and our amazing, you can be Vanna White, Seth. Our amazing uh, display lady is going to show you how it goes on. <laughs> right. And then, you know, these shaft thingies would just be somewhere else on the thing. Uh, Probably on, well, I don't know. I guess it depends who loaded it. And then the floral wires to create the tie downs. And Class One Model Works has a YouTube channel where they show you how you would want to do this. I think it's done really well. It's better than anything I could do. And there's no reason for me to worry about showing you exactly how to do this. Our, our, our display lady has been very nice to show us about bending the wire and then. The cool thing about this floral wire is it's rigid, semi-rigid, so you can bend it into shape and then just, as you can see, there you Well, let me, let me, well, let me cut it off a little bit. Here's our one minute sample, but we simply put a little kink in the floral wire and dropped it through uh, the nearest handy slot. Or you could, uh, you know, do as the railroads might have done and uh, bolt or weld some dunnage up here and I'd probably rust the wire a little bit, either using, a, you know, a, a rusting etching solution or paint. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a few of these would be perfect, uh, you know, maybe crossed, you know, as, as creative as you want. You're just trying to uh, hold the thing in place and have a, you know, believable visual story. Right. I would imagine you probably would use some floral wire, wire to tie down the the bearings as well. Yeah. So. Again, a, another nice load, and it comes with everything you need to put it on. All right, so this next one is called an old transformer, and it says on here that it's modeled from a prototype that would be produced in the 1920s or 1930s. So if you're a more modern era, this could be taken to scrap or whatever. Draining all the PVCs out of it. Yeah, um, into a river, probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so hazmat site in a box. <laughs> Anyway, this one has a list price of $49.99 and then the uh, low price of $44.99. Uh, so again, if you shop around, it'll save you some money. And this is one that I want to show all sides of because it has a lot of really cool detail. And right, and we've lit this more from one side so that you can see the detail kind of pop by having shadows being cast by the detail. And uh, boy, this is a really good model. So this is in the gray primer, and again, we're side lighting for emphasis, but on your railroad, you might want to uh, use a little panel liner or India ink wash to bring out the shadows. 
obviously if it's a load being removed, you'd have some oil stains and perhaps a little bit of rust. But uh, it's just going to come up to be a fantastic model and a really exciting load that will draw a lot of attention. And again, there's just fantastic detail here, clean-outs, valves, uh, apparently uh, pads to secure it. Um, you know, they've just done a beautiful job. And we can kind of see it from here, but I'm going to just tip it up so you can see the top detail. How cool is that? Yeah, and there's conduits. And uh, turn it around this way so you can see this. Uh, oh, the yeah. cabinet opens up, and there's portholes and handles and um, just all sorts of exciting stuff. And there's nothing to stop you from adding some additional detail if you find that in a period photo to match. Now, something I, I was noticing as I was handling this model is that these things that we were referring to as pads look to me like separately applied parts. I mean, look at how how that looks, Seth. What do you think? Is yeah, the undercutting is is fantastic. I am not quite sure how you do that with a mold, so I'm pretty sure it's separate parts. Um, and uh, yeah, look also up here. Very high quality there. And once again, you know, there's the this minimally invasive, if you will, ejector pin, and that uh, would line up beautifully with one of these central line holes if you wanted to have a removable load. Yeah, and you know. I was going to mention that on the last time we were talking about the possibility for that kind of pin is, I mean, you just use a piece of brass rod or something, obviously. Or styrene, whatever's handy. Right. Yeah, yeah styrene, whatever, some kind of a rod. But the point is, if it didn't line up, you could easily just drill a hole for it. And I might even drill another hole into this so that it doesn't, you know, pivot on the, on the yes. one piece. Because they would have drilled holes into the car anyway. Yes, and, and that's a point Stephen makes in his video that, uh, you know, these things were, you know, very much for the purpose of transporting big, odd-shaped stuff. And the whole point was to carry the stuff safely. So, you know, they'd weld it up whatever you want. And if you didn't like it, you'd get out your torch and cut off the old uh, pads and put your own new ones on. And so this is what you would do. And then, of course you know, tie it down to the various places with the wire that it came with, right? I said it on the other ones. I'll say it again. If you get one of these and you get the flat car, you want to look at the Class 1 Model Works YouTube channel for how to properly install the tie downs or to get an idea of how to tie it down prototypically. Uh, one of the great things about that video is Stephen Priest himself is the one showing you what to do. And I knew his name before they ever started class one because he's been on the master model railroader list for a long time yeah he's a very very talented modeler and does this sort of thing anyway so this is clearly coming from a place of a lot of experience and love one thing on this load is you might add uh eye bolts or small pieces of styrene um angle to uh you know provide tie points for uh your tie down so lots of things you could do or you could just draw drill a little hole in the side and insert your uh, floral wire in there so lots of great options uh just beautiful piece of work here i model a waukesha electric transformer plant that existed in uh, milpitas california until the early 2000s and that ships transformer loads and up to this point the best alternative we had which isn't terribly different from what they use prototypically to ship was this Walther's flat, which uh, is, is a little bit larger because it's got these span bolster trucks and the old Walther's transformer. And there were additional parts that, you know, could have been left in a, a box on the, uh, on the deck. And uh, as you can see, I didn't do much about weathering this one. And this was actually a very good model for its time. They're still available, I think, and uh, they're relatively inexpensive. But you can definitely see the difference between the uh, late 80s, I think, was when this kit came out, maybe early 90s, and uh, what you're getting with the Class 1 kit. So um, not to say that the Walters is, is a, a bad model. It just, you know, didn't have all the detail that the Class 1 have added to theirs. We saved my... Favorite piece for last. They call this the large transformer. The list price for this one is $65.99 with an MAP of $59.99. They say this one's modeled after a prototypical style that would have been around the 1970s or later. So if you have a 
modern era layout, this would certainly work for you. And this one is really big. Uh, we'll show you when we put it on the car. Just to give an idea, this is how big it is compared to the one we were just looking at. This one also comes with the floral wire to tie it down. And look at all this stuff back in here. I, I, I'm there's everywhere you look, there's something to look at. Yeah, the complexity is is just really interesting. Uh, if we turn it here, you can see the um, the bolt heads and uh, handles and uh, uh, these may be uh, lift rings uh, are are just beautifully rendered. Uh, again, a little cabinet down here. Um, piping of various sorts, um, uh, all sorts of bracing, uh, again, uh, and a little bit of a control panel, uh, reference to some prototype photos, uh, you can certainly detail it up. And again, you know, I would suggest, uh, you know, a panel line wash or something just to bring out some of this detail, particularly at the bottom, because it's, uh, it, it, it just gets better and better the closer you look. I really like the bolt detail around yeah. the edge of that square piece there. Bolt detail is great. Um, the pipe detail is also pretty cool. I'm, I'm expecting that some of this plumbing probably ties into an external cooling system. So again, there's some opportunity to uh, detail it up if you're using it uh, off the car as uh, part of a structure uh, or you know something you might see looking into a powerhouse or something like that. And finally, I thought it would make sense to look at the top from this angle because you can see these little round pieces, which again, I have no idea what these are, but... They're access hatches. Right. They look like they're separately applied parts, don't they? Yes. I'm noticing that some of them seem a little offset, and I don't know if it was like that on purpose, but I did notice that it's just the ones on the ends. Yeah, and they're and, offset the same on both sides, so right? it seems to be deliberate. Yeah, that definitely looks intentional. But again, I mean, just look at all the, everywhere you look on this model, there's something to look at. It's just a really cool piece. And once again, this is an example of, you know, how it would be on there. Of course, you would use all the floral wire to tie this monstrous thing down. But you can see it's not only tall, but it's also wide. It goes over the edge of the car as, as well. One of the things, Seth, that I always talk about when I do product spotlights of flat cars or Gons or even box cars with doors that open is you can get really creative and put custom loads on. Well, this saves you a lot of time if it fits in with the story you want to tell in your layout. Absolutely. These big pieces of industrial equipment are uh, you know, just fantastic loads. Uh, operationally, they offer you some possibilities because they're probably high wide. So this is a train that uh, probably operates at restricted speed, maybe, you know, has restrictions on which routes it can take due to clearances. So, uh, you know, you can get a lot of follow on operations value out of this kind of thing, as well as it just being fantastic eye candy. Right, that's what I was going to say. It just looks cool. It, it really does. Um, and, uh, and again, you know, if you, you know, talk to Steve and Mike, uh, the proprietors of Class One, it's, uh, it's very, very clear that they really enjoy that aspect of the hobby. Class One has made actually a really smart business decision by having loads to go with their highly anticipated flat cars. And as you can see, from looking at these things, they are really detailed and beautiful models. Yeah, this this stuff is uh, just state of the art, uh, much better than uh, most of the products we've had up to this point. Not that the uh, you know uh, good modeler couldn't uh, uh, improve on what there were, but these are just fantastic out of the box. And uh, again, just the smallest amount of weathering and the little bit of effort uh, securing them to the cars. Uh, these will be fantastic, or frankly, they'll be fantastic as freestanding loads or part of structures. Yeah, something else I'm really excited about was that they gave you everything you need to attach them to the car. So this is a great project straight out of the package. Uh, good job, Class 1 Model Works. I can't wait to see more. Yes.